All right, Founder fans, welcome to Founder of the Day Trivia Night. It's Friday. Thank you so much for being here. I'm a little loud. I'll turn myself down. Who's ready to play some trivia? Let me know in the comments if you're here and you're ready to go. I'm sure some of you are. I'm sure some people are strolling just a little bit late. Now, uh, I did forget to roll up my sleeve, so I'll be doing that as I welcome you. Thank you for being here. I see four of you already rolling in. I hope you guys are excited, and most of you already hit like. Thank you so much. Uh, pretty excited to get back to trivia. We missed last week because I was journeying the world, so to speak. Uh, I am just, hi, Catherine Livingstone. Uh, you've been studying. Okay, we're very excited. Uh, you know what? I'm silly me. I forgot to look up exactly how many founders we got last week. Hi, Ashley. Thank you for being here. Uh, or two weeks ago uh, for our big grand finale. But we've got, what were we, like 12 short? Uh, I don't know if Matt and Troy are here this time. Uh, hi, Lauren. Thanks for coming. Uh, Matt and Troy, I believe, missed uh, two weeks ago where we got, uh, I believe it was uh, out of 243, we hit like 230 or something like that. So this is it. We're going to see if we will. Chances are we'll get a little bit of a setback. We don't want that. But, you know, when you do so well one time, it's kind of expected to happen. So we'll see exactly how that goes. Hopefully we do. Uh, hopefully everything goes swimmingly. Uh, I got a little bit popping up here. Not sure about that. What do you streams? Current bit rate is lower than recommended. Hey, let me know if you guys are getting sound and everything's okay. Uh, and getting some signals from YouTube. I might be having trouble. I sure hope not. Anyway, let's get warmed up. I do want to say, of the decks of cards I have, I actually found uh, a, an, another pack that I forgot I had. Hi, Miss Fit. Thanks for coming. No trouble here. Thank you, Catherine. Oh, we'll just ride with it. What does YouTube know, right? <laughs> so I got these cards. Uh, I'm going to cover the question for now, but they are revolutionary war cards. So let's go with it. And I'm going to pop up this first question. Let's get over here. All right, everyone's giving me the thumbs up. We're good. In that case, let me know what you think. What caused the most soldiers' deaths in the American Revolutionary War, it should probably say. So what caused the, what caused the most soldiers' deaths in the Revolutionary War? Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. You know, quick sip of water. A little early this week, I'm taking a sip of water. Okay, I see uh, Misfit saying illness, Lauren saying disease. Uh, essentially the same answer. Uh, Catherine, blood loss. Very interesting. That's a great guess. Uh, so the answer I went with, because this answer, the card has a very long answer. It's hard for you to see, but it's quite a lengthy answer. Uh, but I did go with disease, but probably, because as it says in the card, historians aren't 100% sure exactly how many people died from exactly what things, uh, but the chances are uh, disease between disease, and it also says wounds, although my understanding is it would be disease, but disease and wounds put together probably outnumber uh, the amount of deaths from the battlefield, although wounds certainly seems like that should count from the battlefield. Um, but yes, disease ran rampant uh, at the time throughout the colonies, uh, infections and things like that. Uh, yes, they did treat a lot of things with bloodletting. So bloodletting is a good answer, especially because they the card says wounds also. So let's do one more of these before we go over to Sporkle and do something over there. But yeah, Lauren, Lauren gets it. Um, uh, the disease could lead to, inf does infection count as a disease? And again, like we don't have all the numbers aren't kept track of. Uh, the British kept pretty good numbers. The Continental Army kept surprisingly good numbers but not every officer kept best not records um certain militias did didn't keep records like we would hope they might uh but anyway let's bounce over to this next question get rid of that one for you question number two what part did betsy ross play in the design of the american flag the design of the american flag might be a hint we did talk about Betsy Ross's name came up yesterday in our weekly wrap-up very quickly, talking about someone else who also played a very major part in designing the American flag. Arguably more major. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So let me know what you think. Uh, what part Betsy Ross played in design of the American flag? Now, I will say uh, the answer on this card is kind of a cop-out. <laughs> um, I see Lord coming in with an answer. I'm going to wait to see if anyone else pops in with any other answers. Um, but, uh, Lorne is on the right track. That's certainly for sure. Um, so actually that is the common misconception and basically what the card is implying here. Uh, Lorne says some say none. And 
the card says essentially the same thing. The card says no one really knows. I said she probably made some. So the thing with Betsy Ross is uh, she was a a cousin of George Ross, uh, who I believe was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, definitely a Continental Congressman. Uh, she was a seamstress. She lost two husbands during the war. Uh, she was a fascinating character, um, and she was definitely commissioned by the Pennsylvania State Navy. I'll remind you, each separate colony, most separate colonies, and then states had their own individual navy, just like they had their own militias. So the Pennsylvania State Navy commissioned her to make flags for their ships. And we don't have records of her making American flags, though as a seamstress who was making flags at the time, there were dozens of seamstresses hired to make flags at the time, and Betsy Ross probably made at least one, if not several, American flags. Though, the story of her designing the American flag is, quite frankly, untrue. Uh, as we talked about yesterday, Francis Hopkinson designed the American flag. Uh, Betsy Ross, like I said, probably made some American flags, but... Uh, the story of her designing it came about almost a hundred years after her death. One of her grandsons made that claim. Fairly unsubstantiated. <laughs> and uh, people ran with that story for a while because it, that was about in the 1870s, going on the 100th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. People were hungry for these kinds of stories, and you didn't really have to prove any of the history you were talking about back then. So, sorry about you, Ross fans. Uh, great lady. Didn't necessarily make those flags. So I am going to, before we pop over, you know what? Let's hop over to trivia right now. How about that? Let's do some of that trivia. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to move you guys over here. Uh, doing a new setup. This is the one we're doing later. Right now, we are going to pop over to the authors of the American Revolution. We've done this one in the past, but like some of the ones I've repeated, this is a very important one. These are names we really should know if, as it seems to be, you are interested in studying the American Revolution so wholeheartedly, uh, you want to know who wrote some of these documents. So we have five minutes to name 32 names. These 32 people, uh, one would hope, uh, had a, a great part in writing different things of the American Revolution. You can see we have uh, Common Sense, kind of an obvious one. The five, five people who sat on the committee that drafted the Declaration of Independence, drafting the Articles, Constitution... Okay, so for the Constitution, there's the proposed plans. The, hey, John Adams, welcome. Glad you made it. Uh, we're about to name the authors of the Revolution. For the Constitution, there's actually 15. Uh, the proposed plans, the drafting, the Committee of Detail, drafting the Constitution, the final draft, or the Committee of Style, uh, authors of the Anti-Federalist Papers, a favorite of mine, the Federalist Papers, uh, make sure it's not behind my head, the Bill of Rights, and the American Ing American Dictionary of the English Language, or American English, as I would say it, as a biased person. So, I'm ready to go. When I see someone, I'm only about two, two and a half seconds ahead of you guys, but I'm going to wait to see someone make a name. And when someone makes a name that they think should be up on this list, I'm going to start typing. So let me hear it. Who authored important things? Ooh, Lauren, coming in hot. Franklin. He's definitely up there. He helped draft the Constitution. Hamilton. I'm sorry, Declaration. Alexander Hamilton, Federalist and the... Oh, Payne. Yes, Thomas Payne. Definitely the author of Common Sense. Jefferson. Yes, pretty famously wrote the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Washington. Let's see. No, Washington wasn't... He was at the Constitutional Convention, but he wasn't necessarily known for his pen. James Madison was. Uh, Madison's... Ooh, that's f four correct answers. <laughs> Jefferson we just got. John Jay. Yes, John Jay wrote some of the Federalist Papers. He wrote a bunch of other stuff, but... Apparently nothing they want here. John Adams certainly was on the drafting committee of the Declaration of Independence. Webster, if I can spell it, is the correct answer. Dictionary of the English Language. That came out 40 years later. They're really stretching for that one. Catherine, we just got John Jay. That's a correct answer, though. Good job. Um, let's see. Uh, there has been someone who's come on for interviews several times over the last month or so. Uh, Yates. That's right, Miss Fit. I've been speaking about Robert Yates every time. Uh, it gave a star for Melanchthon Smith. They're talking about Brutus. They don't know if it was Melanchthon Smith or Robert Yates. It was Robert Yates, probably. They should have put his name first. Um, uh, what was I speaking about? Um, oh, uh, there's a very important name, Sherman. There it is. That is, he signed all those things. He was part of the Connecticut Compromise. Um, 
Catherine, there is a last name that will go on here that is very similar to yours. <laughs> uh, James. Is James a... Uh, nope, good, it's a good guess. Um, drafting the Constitution. Signers of the Constitution would probably be good guesses over here because so many people were signing the Constitution. There was also a woman from Massachusetts, Living, Living Stun. That's right. Robert R. Livingston was on the committee to draft the Declaration of Independence. Let's put him on row. That's a good question. No, no, apparently not. Apparently not. He was involved at that point, but not there. Burn, no, I don't believe so. He didn't draft anything. Ames, ooh, interesting one. No, no, that's a, that's definitely a good guess. Again, there's a, someone who signed a bunch of documents uh, who I have had someone on speaking about this person over and over again recently. Uh, arguably the seventh most important American founder who doesn't get any credit. Lee's a great guess, John Adams. Uh, usually a Lee would be a correct answer, but they didn't write any of these. Oh, and I'm just getting emails coming in my way. Get out of here, emails. I've, I've been in my computer for an hour. Why are you telling me now? Lawrence. No apostrophe. No, surprisingly. Uh, no Henry Lawrence on here. Or John Lawrence. Um, Smith, always a good guess. Uh, again, I've had a, a, a very friendly uh, Dr. Jane Calvert come hang out several times recently, mostly talking about one founder. We've been talking about this one person a lot around here recently. Ross, that's a great guess. Uh, I know I alluded to it earlier. Williamson, also a good guess. Mulligan, no, he never really served in that, that kind of capacity. Skyler's a great guess. Uh, no. So these are not everyone, obviously. These are uh, very important. Oh, George Clinton. That's right, Ashley. Yeah, he was a big anti-federalist. Led anti-federalist movement in New York. Um, think about uh, signers of the Constitution. <laughs> that would be a great hint. Um, drafters of it. We spoke about... Uh, the person who headed the Committee of Detail. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the um, Committee of the Whole. Uh, Sherman, I think we got Sherman. That is, yeah, we got Sherman, but that's a correct answer. King's a good guess. There it is, Rufus King, Committee of Style. Any other names? You might ring a bell for writing uh, uh, writing things. Um, Dickinson, there it is, Misfit. Dickinson for the Articles of Confederation. Extremely important, underrated American founder. Uh, with about a minute left, there are... Um, Hancock, good question. No, no, Jerome's not an answer. I know that. Jerome, I don't even know how to spell it. Um, Committee of Detail. There was a person, we did a whole family tree not too long ago, if you can remember the name of that family. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I don't think Oswald's an answer. Um, oh, boy. I can't even think of hints for some of these people. Harrison's a good guess, but I think he was gone by then. Uh, Harrison's more Declaration of Independence than Constitution. Uh, there is, we did a whole family, a whole family tree. Uh, we could try Stone. Interesting. I'm actually having some trouble coming up with some right now also, so don't feel bad. There is one name I'm certain about. That first one for Committee of Style, the one who actually wrote the finalized, there it is, Misfit, Morris. Governor Morris drafted the, the United States Constitution. Uh, Nicole. No. John Adams, are we going to guess a random? I would say last names would probably be a better shot. Uh, Floyd. No, good guess, Catherine. Uh, no, uh, I, out of time. I'm a little, a few seconds ahead of you. Uh, not Floyd. We did pretty good. We got 20 out of 32. It's hard, but these are really important names to know. Uh, so Edmund Randolph proposed the Virginia plan. Um, he also drew, did the help with the first draft and then did not sign the Constitution. Because he did not like what they had to say. Um, uh, uh, John Rutledge is an extraordinarily important American founder. Was there from the Stamp Act right through becoming second chief justice of the Supreme Court. Nathaniel Gorham is really important. He oversaw the um, Committee of the Whole and kind of operated sometimes. Basically sat in George Washington's seat for a huge chunk of that summer. James Wilson, brilliant legal mind. Oliver Ellsworth will be the third chief justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, there's James Wilson again. William Samuel Johnson, he's a cool guy. He represented Vermont when there was no Vermont. Mercy Otis Warren, I should have given you more hints for her. Uh, Patrick Henry, just kind of a famous name. Samuel Bryan's a really tough one. I wouldn't expect anyone to get that. Um, but, you know, not so bad. Let's, let's pop back up. You know, not perfect, <laughs> but not so bad. Great job, guys. So now we're going to move on to this card. It's uh, one of these cards from this box of games. There are six questions. Uh, uh, three student and three scholar. So I'm going to take off this last question that we no longer 
need, and I'm going to pop up the next one. Question number three. Who had the stronger Navy, the British or the Patriots? Let me see what you guys got. Who had the stronger Navy, the British or the Patriots? This is one of the easier ones. There are only two answers to choose from. <laughs> um, so you got a 50-50 shot. I see a bunch of answers coming in. They all seem to be the same. Again, this is one of the student ones. Uh, and yes, it is the British had a much stronger Navy. The British had what most people considered the mightiest Navy in the world at that time. For many, for many years, for about two centuries, it was the Spanish. And then the British basically took over from there. Uh, the French had a comparable Navy, that's for sure. Um... They would be viewed as number two by this point. I would think uh, Spain had kind of s dropped <laughs> pretty far. Um, but now it's America. That's right. That's right, Mr. Adams. It's America. Um, that's my America voice, you guys. <laughs> All right. So, next question. Who was the most successful privateer for the Patriots? Now, I'm not going to... I'm not going to say anymore. There's another question coming up that I don't want to spoil. So who was the most successful privateer for the Patriots? Now, the card actually gave me three questions. I'm, I'm, I gave us three answers, but I didn't want to put them on there because I didn't want to trick you guys. Uh, it, it, the one they go with is fairly obvious. There is another answer that I would really love to see someone say, though I doubt they any of you will. Uh, there was, I see Misfit with John Paul Jones. Great guess. <laughs> um, waiting to see if anyone agrees with you or disagrees with you. Not much coming in. Uh, John Paul Jones, I guess, technically was a privateer. Uh, Brewster, that's a fun guess. Uh, although Brewster mostly traveled on whale boats across Long Island, he did raid some ships, but uh, Brewster was associated with privateers, but he never really went out on the high seas during the revolution. Um, go with Misfit Ashley. That's probably a good idea because it's John Paul Jones. And that's what they say on this. Although I want to give a big shout out to Lambert Wicks, uh, sometimes pronounced Wickies, but I believe it's Lambert Wicks who went out before John Paul Jones and did just as much, if not more than John Paul Jones beforehand. The Lambert Wicks was definitely a part of the Continental Navy, the fledgling Continental Navy, more than a privateer. Though John Paul Jones, I always consider part of the Continental Navy also. So, yeah, well, I don't know. You know, so I guess there's more flexibility in trivia questions than we want there to be. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. What country sent its navy to help the Patriots fight the Royal Navy? Yeah, Catherine, he did uh, have boats. Um, he mostly took whale boats across the Long Island Sound. If you've, you've never, if you've never been to Connecticut or Long Island, you can really see across the Sound. It's a big body of water. Uh, I wouldn't recommend swimming it, but you could definitely take a little a whale boat and paddle yourself across, which is what he did. And everyone's coming in with France. Uh, John got covering his covering his, uh, all a angles with France or Spain. Uh, yeah, no, the uh, France. France sent their navy. Spain never really sent their navy. They just helped with soldiers that were pretty much already in uh, Louisiana. They did have some ships sail to certain islands, but that wasn't really to help. The Americans, that was more to take over property for themselves by taking advantage of the fact that British was not only fighting their colonies, but also now fighting with France. Um, Spain was very selfish in it. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, the British definitely sent their uh, navy. They definitely sent a navy here. Now, which one is it? Okay, almost skipped this one. Okay, next question. The Battle of Valkyr Island, the first major naval battle of the American Revolution, occurred in what lake? What lake was the first naval battle? And I know what you're thinking. Lake? What? Well, there are certain... I don't want to give too much away, but there are some very big lakes in the United States. <laughs> Including on the East Coast. Lauren with Ontario, great guess. I felt like I shouldn't have given the hint of there are many big lakes in the United States. Because I don't want your thoughts to immediately necessarily turn to the Great Lakes. <laughs> hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. Any hoozle. Uh, any other answers coming in? Anyone got any guesses? 
I'm not that far ahead. You guys a little nervous? Lakes are tough. Lakes are tough. Unless, of course, you live in New York, uh, where you know about Lake Champlain. Lake Champlain, there it is, Misfit, right when I said it. Well done. Lake Champlain, just north of Lake George, a real big lake, not as big as the Great Lakes. Ontario's a great guess because it's also New York. Uh, so, Lauren, if you're not from New York, I can understand how you would choose Ontario because uh, it does come most of the way into New York. New York touches Ontario and Lake Erie, though Ontario is... The New York looks like a shoe, and that's because Lake Ontario. But Lake Champlain's on the other side. The Hudson River basically goes up to Lake George, and that goes up to... Uh, Lake Champlain, where Benedict Arnold literally built a navy. He had his men cut down trees and build ships and built a navy. Benedict Arnold, one time, American hero. <laughs> Another time, not so much. <laughs> from Niagara Falls, yeah, uh, so Niagara Falls falls from Lake Ontario uh, to Lake Erie right outside Buffalo. So yeah, we got it. Us in Canada. <laughs> Next question. The Continental Congress authorized private vessels to attack British ships. What were these ship owners called? That's my boy until he wasn't. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Catherine. Uh, yeah, Benedict Arnold was and still could be considered an American hero. Um, other than that whole treason thing. But, you know, what are you going to do? There, phone. Are you trying to... Waiting for an answer. No answers. Oh, I looked away. I gave you guys a second. Looking at my phone. Imagine that. Mega church charging. Gotta get a new one. Battery is not happy with me. <laughs> um, Lauren coming in with privateers. We had mentioned privateers earlier, and I also mentioned I didn't want to spoil a question. That was this question. <laughs> um, yes, privateers or pirates. The answer is going to be privateers. It's interesting because they reference the ship owners being privateers, and usually, at least myself, from my perspective, I usually associate the captains and, and the actual men on the ship as the privateers, but you know, I suppose they were just sailors. <laughs> um, but they were essentially militia on boats. Um, and yes, the reason they were privateers is when the ship attacked another ship, if, if uh, an American privateer successfully captured a British vessel, then the, the captain and the owner of the ship and the, also the men to a degree would be able to keep a percentage of the spoils that they took from that ship and give the rest to the Continental Army to continue its army-ing. Let's do another one. Question number eight. Acht. What ship did John Ball Jones capture after the Bon Bonhomme Richard was sunk? The name of his ship was the Bonhomme Richard. That's my French. Uh, what ship did he capture after it was sunk? If I'm not mistaken, they were fighting and his ship was sunk, but he captured the other one anyway and uh, took it. It's a fairly famous battle off the coast of England. We were talking about John Paul Jones before. Um, much like him and several other people were actually went to the coast of Great Britain where they were capturing ships to you know, bring the war home, so to speak. So, this is a very difficult question. I definitely would not have known the answer to this. Uh, I forgive you if you don't either. It's a fun question, though. John Paul Jones, the, considered the father of the American Navy, one of the most important seafaring military men of the American Revolutionary War. Uh, he had a boat called the Bonhomme Richard. And I'm not seeing answers come in, so I will give you the answer because I understand this is a really tricky one. Uh, it was the Serapis, I think it's pronounced. Serapis? Ser Serapis? Serapis. The Serapis, a ship that was captured by John Paul Jones. One of many ships captured by John Paul Jones. Let's move right along. You guys obviously didn't care about that question at all. None of you even tried to answer that question. Again, I understand. That's a really difficult one. We have moved up to the scholar level of the questions. Next question. How many colonies had abolished slavery before the Revolutionary War ended? How many colonies had abolished slavery before the Revolutionary War ended? Oh, and I forgot, we've actually finished that card, and we've moved on to, uh, back to these cards. And I will say, I don't love the answer to this question. So I am flexible on your answers, because we're all having fun here. John Adams with two to three. That's a great guess. Lauren with seven. That's a bold guess. Uh, Catherine, one. That's also a good guess. Misfit, three. Also a good guess. I got a cat coming in to hang out. Sorry about that creak. I kick it in my creaky door. So, 
The answer the card gives is three. Now, the card says, by the end of the war, three colonies had abolished slavery. Vermont, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. Three others, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, were on the same path and had already started implementing maneuvers to make it, I can to make it so that they would gradually emancipate their slaves. Now, this is not right because Vermont, at the end of the war, was not a, it had never been a colony, nor at this point was it a state. Before the war, Vermont was disputed territory between New York and New Hampshire. Right at the beginning of the war, they declared their independence of everyone and became technically an independent nation, though this was done as a maneuver so they could later be, become a state in the Union. Uh, but I don't like that Vermont is an answer. Massachusetts, it, by that point, had realized they accidentally already outlawed slavery, but they, they didn't really care because they didn't, there weren't that many slaves, so they wanted to get rid of them. And New Hampshire, I was always under the impression, I've done a good amount of research on New Hampshire. Uh, I was uh, always under the impression that New Hampshire never actually abolished slavery. It just kind of faded out over the years. There was an attempt by Prince Whipple and 20 other slaves to get rid of slavery. They wrote to the government of New Hampshire, but the revolutionary government was preoccupied with winning the war and other things that they did not get to that point. But Pennsylvania, and to my understanding, Rhode Island, uh, definitely Pennsylvania had already passed laws. And, and as they said, Connecticut too, I wasn't aware Connecticut had already passed laws by the end of the war. Um, so from my perspective, they had already outlawed it, even though the transition to outlawing it had not been fully completed. So I say three because Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. <laughs> Same number as the card, but for different reasons. Uh, Mr. Adams, I cannot turn on live stream donations yet because I do not have 30,000 subscribers. But tell the 30,000 friends to come subscribe to the channel. And I'll turn that right on because I do appreciate it. Um, if you do want to donate, I, uh, I do have a Patreon account. You can subscribe link below um and i need to start using my patreon account where you could do single use donations if you want to support the channel thank you for caring uh yeah catherine vermont no these cards are out here spreading lies i bought these in philadelphia uh, across the street from the pennsylvania state house aka independence hall so this is the best we're gonna get uh i wouldn't say they're spreading lies it does go into um depth here slavery was a hot topic throughout the conflict thomas jefferson's original draft of the declaration of independence uh blamed the king for slavery and wanted to end it not in the declaration itself but uh when jefferson handed over the original declaration the continental congress spent two days of july 3rd and 4th cutting out a quarter of what he originally wrote and he sat there wringing his hands in the corner um uh, yada yada, the South didn't really do it. Uh, New York didn't even start with gradual emancipation until 1799. Um, uh, George Mason tried to call during the Constitutional Convention, call for the prohibition of slavery in total, although uh, they did in the Constitution outlaw the importation of slaves. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, George Mason wanted to call for the outlaw of importation of slaves, uh, which would happen 20 years later in 1807 uh, in the Constitution. So they did make that progress. For all the grief they founders received for their uh, not doing so good on getting rid of slavery, uh, they did at least outlaw importation of slaves for a while. Uh, to be fair, I don't want to get too far off topic, but most of the American founders in the in the 1780s saw slavery as a dying institution anyway. Uh, it was becoming less and less profitable at the time. So, uh, sadly, in 1793, during the George Washington administration, some guy named Eli Whitney invents the cotton gin and totally changes slavery from solely becoming unprofitable to quickly becoming wildly profitable. So, not to get too far off topic. Let's keep going. Last big question. Um, I will, I'll be honest with you. Uh, John, Of all the presidents, John Adams is probably the one who didn't have 30,000 friends. Sorry, Mr. President, is true. Last question here. On November 1st, 1765, the day the British Stamp Act was scheduled to go into effect, how many stamp act how many stamp commissioners were operating in the colonies? This is a really great question. And fairly important to know for the 
upcoming Revolutionary War. Again, this is a, a full decade before Lexington and Concord breaks out, but very important. I'm going to take a sip of water. November 1st, 1765, the British Stamp Act, which was passed in the spring of that year. So about six months after the Stamp Act was passed is when it actually was supposed to go into effect. Because remember, you had to send letters on boats across the water. How many commissioners were already there ready to start stamping? Miss Vit, no idea. Uh, Lauren, 32. Catherine, 14. These are good guesses. Uh, John Adams, it is a very random and specific question, and there's a reason it's specific. Catherine went from 14 to no idea. Okay, that's a, dra that's a drastic change. Uh, I would say 14 is a number, making it a better guess than no idea, because <laughs> we are looking for a number. Ashley with a 1,000. This is a lot of fun. You guys are going to be fairly surprised. The answer is none. None. There were people uh, scheduled. Uh, excuse me one second. Sorry about that. We have a kid going to sleep. Good and night, there's a Dad. Good night, big dude. Oh, give me a hug. Oh, hi. Right during trivia. You want to say hi to trivia? Can you see in the camera? Okay, get a good night's sleep. <laughs> I know, it's because I'm on the, the screen. All right, good night, bud. Good night, Daddy. All right, see ya. Anyway, let's make it. You can't see him because I'm in the box. <laughs> good night. Uh, President Adam says good night. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, we forgot to take the baby monitor out of the room before the bigger kid went to sleep, and that would have been a lot of noise. So I apologize for that. Let's get back into this. <laughs> I actually say good night before I do the live streams at night, but when I, I asked her to come in and take the thing, and he was like, hey, say hi, what's up? Good night. Anyway, there were people appointed as commissioners for the Stamp Act before November 1st, 1765. And then there was some tarring and feathering that went on. And the few people who were tarred and feathered resigned. And the other people were hung in effigy. Uh, they specifically reference, I think it's Andrew Oliver. Yeah, Andrew Oliver in Massachusetts was hung in effigy. And he promptly resigned the position the night before. So every person, every single person appointed by Britain and Parliament to be stamp commissioners resigned out of fear for bodily harm. So it is very interesting that the number is zero. It seems why, you, like you said, uh, this is a very specific number, right? Yeah, it's a very specific number. The number was zero. Uh, and that is, again, a decade before the Revolutionary War breaks out. So on top of that, and not, again, not to get too off topic, but on top of that, they also had just finished the Stamp Act Congress a few weeks before this in New York City, where they sent their grievances to the king and to parliament saying, listen, this is not great. Like, you're hurting us here. The, the, the mob, the people in the streets are attacking your commissioners and us, the wealthy elite, are saying, hey, not this is hurting everyone. And what's funny is the Stamp Act Congress worked. King and parliament got rid of the Stamp Act. So 10 years later, uh, nine years later, at the first Continental Congress, as we now call it, well, they thought they'd do the same thing. They'd get together, they'd write the list of their grievances and send it over to the king. But it did not turn out that way this time. <laughs> and instead, they went to war. Uh, John Adams, no, don't like dirt bikes, more of a BMX guy. We uh, do have a little kid's quad, but nothing for grown-ups or big kids yet. Why don't we pop over here where we can play some more trivia now again i feel like an idiot i've been telling myself all day gotta look up gotta look how many we got last time how many we got last time i'm pretty sure we broke 230 we're at the point now and i don't know i haven't seen troy or mark pop in, uh, troy or, or matt pop in this time either but they missed last time too but doesn't matter we have 243 founders to name and we're at a point now where our goal is to name all of them that's it we're there we're ready. Will we? Probably not. Will we recede a little bit because we missed two weeks? Probably. Will we recede anyway because we got like 200, what was it, 228 that we got last time? So, we were 11 away. Okay, 11 away. So, it's 220, uh, 232. Amazing. Thank you, Misfit, for counting for me. Again, I all day, I'm like, I got to do it. got to do it. And then, no. All right. Wait, don't say any. Only say one at a time. 
Some of you like to name like five of them right off the bat. I, that makes it hard for me to keep up. So you got to type them out individually so I can also type them out individually. All right, I'm going to take a sip of water. All right, all right, all right. I'm ready. Let's start with the big six. When I see some names pop up, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm going to hit play quiz. Start typing. When I see, oh, there it is, Ashley, going. Okay, Hamilton, Washington, Franklin, Penn, good one. Hamilton, oh, guy Hamilton. Uh, Jay, Adams, Washington, Franklin, Madison, Jefferson, Madison, Gary, good one. Hancock, again, say him, it's better to say him twice than not say him at all. Jay, do we get Jay? We got Jefferson, Skyler, good one. Dana, Burr. Oh, no, Burr would not be part of the executive branch for a few more years. Paige, Dickinson, I should have specified. Conway, there's only people in the legislative branch. Uh, Thomas Conway's a good guess, though, man. Uh, Morris, Morton, Langworthy, uh, Hall. Remember, people who signed anything important, good you, or people who served in the first House of Representatives or Senate. Uh, good you, Hawthorne, with an E? Nope. Well, Hawthorne was one. Did I just do it? Payne? Morris, I think we got. All right, Pendleton. Oh, you guys are coming hard. Randolph, King, Blount, Blount, Sherman. Yes, Sherman absolutely is on this list. He signed all the things. Uh, Cynickson, Lawrence. Oopsie Daisy, too many A's. Lawrence. Anything that sounds like Lawrence or Lawrence? Or I shouldn't have said it. Rodney. All right, Scott. Yes, Smith, Adams. Do we do? Yep. Uh, Brown, good one. Adams, we just did. Jackson, Hopkins, White, Yates, Lawrence, I think we just did. Yep, good guess. Lansing, Williams, we did Hopkins, and Williams, uh, Reed. Oh, we got one Reed. Anything that sounds exactly like Reed, but is spelled differently. Rutledge, I can't be giving you guys that many hints. You're too good at this point. Williams, son, there we go. Wythe, with Bloodworth, Wentworth, Bassett, Gorham, Hillman, Ellsworth, that's three of the four Worths, Henry, Blair, Reed, I'll give you the other Reed, hey, AZ Patriot, what's up, man, Muhlenberg, Clark, Mick, Henry, Carol, Hopkinson, there it is, Misfit, Paul, Jada, welcome. Uh, Hart. It's popping in for the grand finale. I like it. Hart with the T, man. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Ellsworth. Did we do Ellsworth? I think we just did. Yeah. Good guess, though. Better to say it twice than not at all. Williams. Kent. No. Good, interesting guess. Morton. I think we just did. Yeah. Wadsworth. There's the last one. Bland. Hopkinson. We just did. Good guess. Foster. Lewis. Paca. Hawkins. Revere. Nope, Revere is not a part of the legislative branch. I know, it's tricky. There's a lot of important generals that are not on here. DeHart. Thank you for remembering Hart and DeHart, Misfit. Manning. Yes? No. Oh, I thought it was one. Monroe. App. We must have done them already. Uh, Collins. Morris, we did. Patterson. Taylor. Braxton. Dana, do we do? Bartlett. Dane, Nathan Dane. I'm surprised he doesn't count. It's not every member of the Continental Congress. Nathan Dane was certainly... Clinging, important to the Continental Congress. Wilson. Who else do we do? Bedford. Yes, gunning Bedford. Absolutely counts. You don't need a no need for question marks, Patriot. Harrison. Nelson. And fuck people get it wrong all the time, so don't worry about it. Ellery. Gary, I think we did. Campbell? No, that's a good guess though. Rivington. Interesting. No, the author. Uh it's Bor. For, um, you did, oh, you spelled it, yeah, no, there's an O in there, Floyd, great guess, though, uh, Hancock, I think we did, uh, Walker, do we do, got it, Payne, yeah, we got Payne, it would cover all of them, I just type in the last name, so if there's more than one person with the same name, gone, uh, then it just adds them all up for us, which is convenient, Herkimer, no, Herkimer was a general, this is just legislative branch, these are lawmakers, not, uh, martyrs to the cause, but great guess, Hooper, Penn, did we get? Yeah. Uh, Giles, good one. Few. Samuel. I don't know. Not a last name, Samuel. 
Uh, Low Livingston, absolutely. That's a few of them. Izzard, absolutely. Ralph Izzard. Johnson. Rutledge. Oh, must have gone Rutledge. Johnston. I'm going to try Rutledge again to make sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, Scott. I think we got, well, John Moore and Scott was, again, a soldier. Fitzsimmons. Gates. These are great guesses. They should definitely be on this list. There's no master list of all founders. That would be awesome. Give Gibson. No. Elmer, good one. Sheen, nope. <laughs> Stevens. Uh, Stevens, no, again, a general. Tucker, good one. Char, no, you get me. You keep getting me. Thatcher, right. No, good guess, though. Ames, did we do Ames? Nope. Paca, uh, Ross, we did. Rush, I think we did. Okay. DeHart, I think we got DeHart, too. Yeah, again, better say it twice than not at all. Stockton, no. Lawrence. Lawrence. Lawrence, there it is, L-A-U-R, Stone, Strong, Bland, got Bland, good one though, Broom, Butler, Martin, did we do Martin, I think we got it, that's okay, better say it twice, did not at all, Cushing, Witherspoon, Walcott, Claymore, interesting name, no, I've never heard of it, and that's probably why, <laughs> um, Morris, I think we did, Christian, nope, Nolan, nope, Will some? Nope. Did you mean end? Uh, Patriot Braxton absolutely is one. Ah, uh, we must already got him because Carter Braxton definitely signed the declaration. Great guess. Wilson Matthews. Good. Jennifer. St. Thomas Jennifer. St. Clair. Spate. Wilson. Must have gone Wilson. I think we got Ross. Uh, Blount, I think we got. Liam. No, his first name. Phew. <laughs> Uh, Shay, nah, he was not legislative. He was a uh, kind of a run of the mill former uh, veteran, current veteran, I guess. Uh, Baldwin, Floyd, I think we got, yeah. Gorm, big week for the Floyds in this part of the world. Johnson, I think we got. These were all right guesses. We just, you know, got got some of them. Drayton, uh, Smith, did we do? Uh, we got Smith. That's a correct answer, though. Mifflin, Mifflin. Must have gotten Mifflin. Climber, good one, right at the top there. Button. No, what's Patriot? What's Button's last name? Coates. Um, Allen. Langdon. I think we got. Oh, we didn't get Langdon. Oh, I'm glad you got that one. Should have done that back with Lee with Yates. Their team. Braxton. Now we tried that one. We already got it. It's it's a correct answer. Uger. Braden. No. Pendleton is definitely correct if we haven't already done it. We have done it. Um. Pinkney, Van Ness, nope. Inger Soul with two L's. Soul, yes, with two L's. Nelson, must have got it. Correct answer. Patterson, it does start with a G. Walton, <laughs> you're right. Button's last name does start with a G. Uh, he has the most va third most valuable signature in the entire world because he was killed in a duel less than a year after he signed the Declaration of Independence, and his signature is super rare. Hudson, Houston, uh, Ashley, you're thinking Hudson. It's like pronounced the same, but spelled differently. Harvey, uh, Fitzgerald. Ooh, I've already gotten that one. Fitz. Oh, no, we got Fitzsimmons. Houston, did we do that one? Yeah. Houston. Don. Oh, okay. Whoa, I spelled, I actually spelled Houston when I was trying to do Houston before. Davy, did we do Davy? Nope. Gwinnett, there it is. Patriot, ah, uh, Misfits got you back here. <laughs> Sumter, no, but some, some without the P, Lauren. I know, I always want to put the P in there too. Uh, Martin, uh, Pelham, no, good guess though. Alex, nope. Mason, absolutely. Page, we must have already gotten Clark, I think we got. Griffin, yes. Walker, did we do? We did. Hooper, must have gotten. Logan, good guess. Uh, Moto, no, I'm not even going to attend. <laughs> Grayson, yes. Lynch, two, two Thomas Lynches. Van Dyke, okay. Black, no. There's another color. Chase, yes, we must have gotten Chase because it's definitely a correct answer. Middleton, did I catch up? 171, 10 minutes left, okay. 10 minutes without looking up once. Hunt? No, good guess. These are great guesses, guys. McClurg. 
Reed. I think we popped in the other Reed. Yes, that is one of the two correct answers for Reed. Uh, <clears throat> Thornton, Thornton, Gray. Whipple is a correct answer. Biddle, that's right. Got to do more on the Biddles. Uh, I have a great uh, reader who has brought up the Biddles to me on many occasions. Uh, Walton, I think we got Walton. And she actually asked me to do another one, so I'm going to. Because she was nice enough to send me, like, basically proof that I'm Elmer. I think we did Elmer, like, right off the bat. Walker. Humphreys is the correct answer. I-E-S. Humphreys. Got it. Okay. Um, Joseph? Nope. Stanton. Sullivan. Stone. Rhodes. Yes. Ended up being a loyalist. Patterson. Got it. We, we got Patterson. That's a correct answer. Is there it? I think we got two. It happens. We always start running over each other, but that's okay. Ellery? Did we do Ellery? Must have. Um, okay, we're slowing down early this week. Um, let's see. Oh, Secretaries of the Congresses. Galloway. That's a good one. Yes, would be a loyalist. Sedgwick. Very important to Massachusetts realizing it was had already outlawed slavery. Sedgwick. We, we must have already done Sedgwick. Webb, good guess. That's all right, Patriot. No, uh, we all right, Patriot, we do this every week. We step on each other's toes like this. Like I always say, it's better to say it twice than not at all. If you, you know, even if you think someone else did say it, if you're not sure, say it. Hanson, yes, like the brothers. Hartley, <laughs> Masterson, good guess. Uh, Ingersoll, I think we got, yep. We did say King. Uh, it's a correct answer. <laughs> Lovell. Taylor. Uh, Holton. We need a secretary. Born. Yes. Cook? No, good guess. Dean. Silas Dean. I was just listening to him about him today. Uh, remind me to throw that up at the end. Pierce. Uh, Dewar. Dyer. Brearley. Uh, Penn, I think we did. Oh, Robert Doe. Good one. Oh, there's also that really tough one to spell. Look at you, Miss Finn Ashley. Same name at the same time. You guys, I love how you guys, not not just Miss Finn Ashley, but like sometimes you guys like come up with the same name at the same time. Warren, I think is right. Oh, it's not. There's a different name. Klingon. Do we already do that one? Wow, great. Um, There's a woman named Mercy Blank Warren and her middle name, her brothers are correct answers. If you know her middle name, Hayward. St. Clair, I think we got. Garland, is that? Okay. Uh, Jackson was Secretary of the Constitutional Convention. We got him, but there was the Secretary of the Continental Congress for almost 20 years. That's an important one. Uh, Ashley, it's Marchant with an A, not an E, but yes, I'm going to give it to you. McClay. Uh, Otis, yes, Otis. You guys got it. Swan, was that one? No. Davey, I think we got. Oh, Misfit Wincoop is one of those silly ones, but we got it. Now, thank you to you. Uh, right above my head is, uh, Nor I don't know about Norton. Uh, we did get Morton, though. Morton Salt, right? I don't think they're really related. Heister. Oh, we're at 200. My computer doesn't want to type anymore. Uh, Heister. Heister. Daniel Hes Hester? No? Okay. Ellery. I think we did Ellery. Yeah, that's definitely a correct answer, though. Don't feel bad just because it's already been done. That's a correct answer. Don't you worry. Huntington, we must have gotten. Uh, Brearley, I think we got. Uh, Strong, we might have done. Simmons, we got Fitzsimmons. Let's make sure before I say Simmons. Uh, yeah, so pretty close. Bedford, Catholic, we signed the Constitution. Leonard, no. Uh, I think we got Dwayne. Dwayne, yeah, we did. Uh, Mercer. Uh, Gary. Do we get Gary? Yes. Don't want to forget Gary. Dalton. I think we... Oh, we didn't get Dalton. We got the other ones. We got Drayton and Dayton, but not Dalton. Oof. Mason, we did. Yeah, Dayton, I think we got. Uh, Baron is a good guess. Again, uh, Lauren, it's has what? Yes. No D. Drayton, I think we got. Uh, Lorenz, but we did. We got Lorenz and Lawrence and Lawrence. Do we do Lawrence? Okay. Wingate? Oh, good one. Uh, first Continental Congress delegate, president of 
Oh. Oh, we're missing a giant one right above my head. Thatcher. If we didn't get it. Okay, we must have got it. Langdon. 40 more. In five minutes. We can do it. Uh, Van Ness. No, he was, uh, he never really, uh, made it to that kind of level. Partridge is going to be right. Unless we already did it. And it's not right. <laughs> well, I mean, it is right. Uh, just no longer. It's only right once. Low, I think we got. Yeah, we've got a lot of these. Again, the guy who was secretary of the Continental Congress the whole time. I talk about him kind of frequently. Herring. Uh, hearts. We've got, um, President of the, there's a one person from Pennsylvania is first Continental Congress delegate, President of the Congress, the Confederation, and a Constitutional Convention delegate. Interesting. Aesop, definitely. Langworthy is right, but I think we did get it. Eaker, nope. There's a CK, and and no, no, he he was uh very young at this point. Uh, he would not be older until later on in life. Gadsden, yes, good one, Misfit. Way to bring that one out. Um, I can scroll through a little bit. I'm missing a few people from Virginia. Parmar. Now I don't think he ever served in that way, but thank you for reading. <laughs> Pinkney. Uh, we got we got the Pinkneys. Pinkney Bros. New York. Oh, there's a guy from. Oh, oh, you're already coming at it. Uh, Johnson and Jackson. I think we got. Randolph? Did we get the Randolphs? Yeah, we got them. Having an off week. I thought there might be a little setback because I took so much time off. Corbin. Good guess. Good guess. Um, You know, I thought we got Rutledge. Rutledge. Like, we must have. I mean, I can check. Um. Oh, South Carolina. Oh, we're getting answers. I think we got Izzard and Walton's come up a few times. Uh, Burke, Adonis Burke, good one. Roe, good one. Really like the spies, Captain. Okay, <laughs> see what you're getting at here. Uh, Matthews, we got uh, McKean. I guess we got McKean. Okay. Well, whoopsie doodle. Tennessee. I know that's wrong. There's too many ends in that. So. Climber, we got Ellery, we got um, we got a lot of the tricky ones. Crane, good one. Uh, Miss New Jersey, uh, Rutledge, we got we got South Carolina, so that's good. Uh, yes, Richard Bassett, we must have already done. Um, Middleton, must have done. Ellsworth, uh, Green, no, Green never served in the legislature. Very important founder, though. In my, in my opinion, really the one who won the war itself. Uh, Payne, we got. Oh, Blair. Got. Oof. Skyler. Oh, Hosmer. That's a good one. Oh, coming through at the end there. For Connecticut. We need two more guys from Connecticut. Two original congressmen. Again, these hints can be tough. Uh, one from Delaware. Tucker. Kinsey. Good one. Kinsey. Oof. I never would have remembered that name. Um, all right, we got all of Georgia. We got most New Hampshire. Uh, Scudder, a sign of the decoration. Knight? No, I don't believe there was a knight. Uh, Sherman, I think we got. We usually get Sherman pretty much right off the bat. He's a favorite around here, Patriot. <laughs> he signed a whole lot of stuff. Ooh, Rhode Island. We are missing a First Continental Congress delegate. Um, this person's brother... I don't want to give it away. Uh, Artemis was head of the Continental Navy. Uh, so if you can get that last name. Well, we just did Caswell. Taylor? Utah? Must have St. Clair, I think we got. Edwards? No. Mitchell? No. Huh. So again, Artemis Blank. This guy's name was Samuel Blank. Ooh. Wadsworth, I think we got, but I don't know if we got Cadwallader. No, good one. Simmons? Lord, you're really pushing Simmons. It's Fitz Simmons, and we got it. <laughs> Hosmer, I think we just got Hosmer. Tolton? Hilton? No, he was a doctor. That's a great guess. 
Pendleton. We we got the Pendletons. Uh, Gibbons. No. Oh, Boudin. No. Great one. Wood. Oh, I got 24 seconds. Branson. Chase. Uh, Forbes. For, oh, oh. Sherman. Nice. Dwayne, I think we got. Uh, there's no Forrest. Oh, I'm running low on time. I'm running low on time. This is going to be someone. Oh, Cushing. Oh, we must have gotten Cushing. And I'm out of time. And I'm a few seconds ahead of you. Uh, no, uh, Cini might be a right answer. Uh, uh, Knox, he would serve as um, Secretary of War, essentially, but not actually there. Uh, Roberto would have been right. Sedgwick, I couldn't spell, so I think it. I think we got it. So, I'm a little disappointed. Well, first of all, let's say 215 is an amazing amount. 88%. That's giant. That's really good. You knew we were going to take a step back. We had two weeks off, and we were so close last time. Next week, we'll come in nice and hot, ready to go, and we will nail it next week. Now, we got most of Virginia, which is great. We miss Bannister. Oh, that's kind of an easy one to remember. Moore is one of those names that just we get sometimes. Isaac Coles, we never get. So someone remember Coles. On this side, I think someone said Mifflin, and I spelled it wrong. So, well, Lauren, your studying is remember Coles next week. That's what you need to study. Write it down and leave it next to your computer. <laughs> Uh, Thomas Mifflin, I'm going to give us that one because I'm pretty sure I tried to type it like three times and couldn't get it in. Um, Charles Thompson, I'm a little disappointed in you, team. <laughs> I'm a big Charles Thompson fan. Technically shouldn't be on this list because he was never a member of the Continental Congress. He was secretary, but he did sign most of the documents because he had to attest to them. So when the first copies, the broadsides of the Declaration of Independence went out, uh, well, they went out with one name, John Hancock. Because it wasn't until a month later that everyone else signed it. But also there was a second name, Charles Thompson, because he attested to it as a witness. Uh, Henry Wisner is a fam favorite of mine from New York. Um, but that's a tough one. Ag Benson. Okay, so wait. Partridge and Sedwick. I tried to type both of those in. I think I was adding letters to Sedgwick. So that comes in. Thanks, uh, AZ Patriot. Every Friday. Well every weekday at 8 15 but every friday we play trivia at 8 15 so if you, you find yourself thinking about it come on and make sure you hit subscribe and hit the like button so you know when we're doing it uh van rensselaer we usually get but someone has to spell it for me because i can't spell it sylvester ben i feel like someone said benson too do you do coats all right well so i've missed four so we're gonna add four at this line don't know how i missed it i was keeping up with you guys uh jonathan grout the guy with the first telegraph we were talking about uh new jersey and south carolina we got that's really fantastic. Great job. Uh, Connecticut, we got most of Sturgis is a fun name, like the motorcycle company or, or motorcycle event. Uh, and Trumbull usually is a name we get. We're going to forget a name. Uh, Cini came up just at the end, but I had already, uh, my time had already run out. I am three seconds ahead of you guys. So uh, that's five. I guess we'll count. Gail, that's an interesting one. I can never remember that one. Uh, oh, Cordelius Hartnett, like Josh Hartnett. Vining's one we usually get. We just didn't get it this week. Uh, Ash, again, names we usually get. Steele, Sevier. Uh, we got Georgia in its entirety. That's great. Uh, New Hampshire. Uh, Nathaniel Folsom. Oh, Nicholas Gilman. He's really important, actually. I re I've been reading about him a lot. I was actually thinking about writing my first book about him, believe it or not. Because he like was part a young man during the war itself, and then he goes on to... Uh, the Constitutional Convention, and, and his family is very important, so he goes on to be a congressman in the first Congress, and his brother goes on to be governor, and blah 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 uh, Samuel Livermore, fun, and then Samuel Ward is who I was trying to get. His brother was Artemis Ward, was the first um, uh, 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 commander, commodore of the American Navy. So if we add that five on there, we're at 220, which is still really super impressive, about 91%. So, great job, team. Uh, I'll put myself back up here to say goodbye to you, if I can. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed trivializing with me. I will be back next week, of course, with more trivia. Uh, I will also be back up on Monday. I see Misfit saying, uh, finally got Unlikely Allies in the Alexander Rose books. Uh, yeah, cool. Have fun.
have fun. Unlikely allies, uh, I actually don't want to spoil it. I, oh, I was said Silas Dean before. Uh, Michael Troy from the American Revolution podcast, who's come and talked to us a few times. Uh, I finally caught up after several years of trying to catch up on all this stuff uh, just today, or yesterday. And I read his book on, um, I'm sorry, I listened to his second to last one on Silas Dean coming home. And it's really interesting because it talks all about the infighting in the Continental Congress and the politics during the war. Uh, so really definitely check it out. Uh, George Reed is super cool. Uh, that's awesome that you're related to him. Um, uh, 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 I always get George Reed and Joseph Reed confused because their names uh, sound the same or are spelled different. Uh, yeah, so definitely, I definitely recommend, although Misfit, if you're going to read Unlikely Allies, I would say read Unlikely Allies first uh, and then get this extra summary at the end. Uh, although he doesn't talk about some of the crazy parts uh, to Eon. Uh, is just the mo one of the most fascinating characters of the 17th, the 18th century. So definitely enjoy that. And the Rose book is great. I mean, if you like Turn, uh, it's the same. The guy who wrote, Alexander Rose, who wrote Washington Spies, also wrote the screenplay for the TV show Turn. He took a lot of liberties in that, though. Uh, I'm The the book is really amazing. So I really hope you enjoy it. Um, if you guys have any recommendations or questions or anything like that, I'm always available. Uh, I did not put a link in, but we do have the Discord channel, which I'm making an, a concerted effort to be involved with more. I went on this vacation and just was super lazy. So what are you going to do? <laughs> All right, Misfit. Thank you. Yeah, read, Uncle, read Unlikely Allies. It's fascinating. It is my favorite American Revolution book. So definitely enjoy it. Uh, other than that, I guess we're all done here. Uh, we like to end with the name of John Adams's estate, Peacefield, and I will end on that. Uh, Peacefield.